All right, hello to uh, everyone who's following my channel and these updates I've been uh, posting in recent weeks about the Eton uh, Elite Satellite Receiver that uh, Eton did release, at least in first batches, uh, a few weeks ago, and subsequently had to <coughs> subsequently had to uh, recall essentially uh, for what is assumed to be at least one firmware update. Um, you all have seen, uh, I assume, the, the past comments that I've had about the Eton satellite. This was a missed opportunity by Eton, um, following up on the uh, famous and loved um, E1 receiver, which was Eton branded but produced uh, in conjunction with R.L. Drake uh, in the early 2000s. Um, many hoped that this would be uh, an improvement upon the E1 and that was not to be. Uh, clearly what Eton has done here is taken uh, cabinets uh, from the E1 receiver or produce new ones with the uh, Elite satellite name. Uh, the cabinet of course has been revised, no more rubber coating, which is good. Cabinet actually looks quite, uh, quite, uh, quite good itself. Uh, but what they did was they put DSP uh, technology, just swapped in DSP technology into the E1, whereas before you had uh, a receiver that was basically a copy of the RL uh, the Drake uh, SW8 receiver uh, and had superb uh, selectivity options, superb passband tuning, um, and overall, although the, the E1 had its problems, overall the E1 was and remains a fantastic receiver. What's happened now with the uh, Elite Satellite is uh, quite the opposite. Uh, clearly Eton uh, prematurely released this receiver without enough quality control, without enough thought given to key aspects uh, and, and whether features actually worked uh, as we remember them working from the E1. So let me go down uh, a list of uh, issues with the uh, Elite Satellite. First of all, I did receive a receiver uh, at no cost uh, to me from Eton. Um, this receiver was on the way to me and then it was reversed, sent back to Eton, or at least one receiver was, and then I was told that I was receiving what I assume is an updated, uh, firmware updated uh, Elite Satellite. So let me run down the issues uh, uh, here for you. Uh, first of all, the high definition HD FM lock problem appears to be have been fixed. Um, that's one positive point. RDS uh, on this receiver works well, at least on the unit I have. Um, but <laughs> sorry to say everything else is a negative. Uh, first of all, uh, AGC automatic gain control remains inexplicably offering only the choice of on or off. In the old Eton receiver, you had three choices uh, for AGC. It's just baffling why Eton would have uh, made this kind of a decision. Uh, on passband tuning, this is seriously flawed. Uh, this issue alone, in my view, sinks the elite satellite um, like a Titanic. It, it, it's really bad. Uh, the passband tuning remains absurdly inoperable on anything but SSBN sync. On the old E1 passband tuning, which was true passband tuning, was operational in AM and single sideband modes. Why they've done this, I have no, no idea. Worse on the passband tuning is that it functions not as a true passband tuning um, feature, but as a fine tuning control. Literally, when you're using the knob that's marked passband tuning slash squelch, you're literally retuning the radio. That's not what passband tuning is all about. Passband tuning is supposed to be able to move, uh, you know, through the uh, through the IF uh, IF uh, bandwidth of, of a, on a certain frequency, not to actually retune. So you actually hear. Uh, BFO, you know, tones uh, that the, the true passband tuning was seen, of course, in receivers like the R8B, the SW8. This is not passband tuning. Um, high def back to HDFM appears not to be locking up, but on a station when you see uh, 
a station with uh, HD channels with sub-frequencies, you see uh, sometimes you see an HD 1 plus and sometimes you see an HD 2 but there's no second HD channel that appears. You also notice that HD is also selectable using the select uh, left and right buttons. But for example, here in the Washington area, we have 88.5 FM and the main channel uh, itself will show up saying HD 1 plus. Uh, then you have an HD 2 that shows up on the one HD channel that's acceptable. It, it's kind of strange. It seems to me that if a station has only one HD sub frequency, that should be HD 1 and not HD 2. Um, there is on the upper left of the receiver uh, a knob uh, marked equal, A E Q U I L I L. In fact, uh, let me let me uh, get the receiver right here and show you that. Um, again, uh, yeah, right here, uh, up here on the below the antenna is this uh, control mark E Q I L. Um, this appears to be uh, tuning between mono and stereo, perhaps. I, 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 I'm still not quite sure what this does, and unless, unless I'm missing something, there's, there's no ex explanation of this uh, in the manual. While I have the radio up uh, on display for you here, I'll point out that on this particular receiver, the uh, buttons, which have a distinctive click, to them. These buttons are easily depressed, but there's one button here, which is the seven, that requires more pressure. So this is possibly an issue of cabinet alignment where the where the buttons are placed. All the other ones seem okay, uh, except for that one. So that's a quality control issue. Again, while I have the receiver up here for you, uh, let me go turn to the antenna. Um, this antenna, let me put it up for you here. Um, this this antenna here, these segments are incredibly shaky. Uh, I, I don't know how the radio got out of the factory with this kind of issue, quality control. You can especially see it right here when the antenna is fully extended, uh, right here in the second segment from the bottom right here. It, it almost feels as if you're going to rock the antenna, you know, rock the segment right out of its, right out of its uh, other segment here. So that's, that's another issue that I identified and others who got this receiver uh, identified uh, with it. Uh, again, uh, overall the cabinet is, is very nice. No rubberized coating. On the back you have magnets for the kind of strange uh, leather uh, case that Eton includes in the back. Of course, this is where, right on the side, this is where the, the XM series uh, antenna module used to be. Uh, you've got the same output outputs on the side here with choice for NIMH or alkaline batteries uh, and internal external antenna. Strangely, you've got still this PAL antenna jack, uh, which, which I've talked about before. I mean, they should have, should have revised that to BNC or some other more normal jack. Even an RCA type antenna would have been preferable. Um, on this receiver, you know, everything else uh, functions. Uh, the knobs have their detents, um, and the main knob has kind of detented a detented feeling to it. Um, another uh, point that I wanted to bring up, we seem to have lost uh, a digit on the fast tuning option. On the old E1 you had digits out to, I think it was, I think it was uh, at least 100 hertz, I'm, I'm, I can't remember whether it was 10 hertz. We seem to have lost a digit on the readout. All right, so uh, again, in, in, in my book, uh, the, again, <laughs> all right, uh, a couple more points. Passband, passband tuning is described in the manual uh, as squelch. And as I note elsewhere, the passband tuning operates in SSB and sync not as true passband tuning, but as a fine tuning control. 
Um, I've not yet confirmed whether uh, the Elite satellite suffers from excessive noise well beyond the level of the E1. Uh, some people who have tested it have noted that the Elite satellite seems to be far noisier than the E1, uh, E1 is. So here's the big headline, and this is a huge headline. Uh, even with this firmware update, Eton uh, does not appear to have addressed the problem of muting while tuning. Um, the muting is, is brief, but it's still there and it's disconcerting. Why that wasn't addressed, I don't know. Whether it can be addressed or corrected in a firmware update, uh, I'm not sure either. Um, okay. Um, in general, I had some small hope that whatever Eaton did in the, amid the flurry of negative reviews of the radio would address major issues. But whatever it was that they did with this first firmware update, um, other than perhaps addressing the HD lockup issue, uh, no, nothing that I can see has changed. Um, I would say at this point that the Elite satellite is certainly not worth $700. I did note that one seller, uh, Adorama in New York, was uh, had a $599 price um, for the receivers that it had. Um, the This receiver may well sell at the $700 level to individuals who are unfamiliar with the issues experienced by listeners, uh, experienced listeners that we know of. Um, if ETOM were to fix the passband tuning issue, uh, assuming they understand from the start what true passband tuning is, and they have they had a, a, a perfect example of that with the E1, and make passband tuning functional on AM mode as well, fix the telescopic antenna issue, provide AGC options other than on or off. Uh, if they did all this, but importantly, the, P, the passband tuning issue is, 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 in my view, at the top of the hill along with muting. If they fixed muting and the passband tuning, this radio might be worth 300 to 350, but not 700. Uh, so Eton has some decisions to make still. Uh, I'm not sure whether uh, the receiver that I have can be sent back for further firmware updates. Uh, we did learn in recent weeks that uh, Universal, uh, Fred Osterman, has said that he will be obtaining uh, firmware update tools uh, so that he can perform firmware updates uh, that come out from Eton so people, you know, they don't have to send the receiver back to Universal and then have it sent back to Eton. Um, but again, it seems to me some of these are physical issues. The antenna certainly is a physical issue. I'm not sure whether the passband tuning can be fixed uh, with a firmware update. And the muting issue, the same thing. Uh, a couple of other things that I uh, forgot to mention. Um, one is that on my particular unit, which by the way, software version of the, on this revised unit is look, listed as 1.05. That's 1.05. Um, on this particular unit, uh, this is, goes back to what I've been saying about Eton, Eton not doing enough homework before they came out with this receiver. Um, my unit is 20 hertz low. Or 20 hertz high, depending on what sideband you're on, a lower or upper sideband. There is no facility in the menu system for recalibrating the receiver, such as the you have, you see in the Texan receivers like the H501 and the PL990X. Um, if you look in the menu system, they, they easily could have provided that kind of an adjustment, but they don't. So as I was saying in my initial reviews or advanced warning reviews before the receiver was released, the fact that Eton had not provided any way to recalibrate this receiver puts it a few steps below the kind of thing that you can obtain from even the, the PL368 from Texan. Uh, certainly the 330 as well, the 990X and the 501. So I just wanted to add that. Um, again, there's no recalibration facility as far as I can tell from this, certainly no physical access hole in the back of the receiver. Uh, and there's no menu, uh, menu access, menu method to be able to recalibrate the radio. So again, on this particular unit, again, this is visible uh, ironically with the passband tuning, which is not, which was not function as a passband tuning 
uh, true P PBT, but with as a fine tuner, is 20 hertz low or 20 hertz high, depending upon lower or upper sideband on this particular unit. Uh, now, whether other units are farther off than that, whether it makes a difference to you is up to you, it makes a difference to me. Um, but that's another issue that, that you know, Eton could have avoided the iceberg on, and they, they obviously uh, did not. So there you go. I mean, uh, that's my update as far as uh, as things stand uh, right now on September 8th, uh, 2022. Uh, we really hope that, you know, things would have been different with this receiver um, and that Eton could have hit it out of the park if it had supplied uh, some advanced units uh, for advanced reviews by myself and others. It probably could have avoided some of these problems. But again, uh, where things stand right now, this receiver, I believe, needs a, a more thorough makeover and revisions that would basically take it off the market for quite a few months. Um, and, you know, that's that's a decision that Eton uh, has to make. Uh, to be fair to Eton, I, 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 you know, the, the fact that they um, were determined to, to get this receiver out after three or four years of... Uh, of delay, um, you know, credit credit to Eton for that. But why they didn't provide advanced review copies, and why they allowed these issues, these quality control issues, to go out, like the button that's harder to press or the telescopic antenna, um, it, it is really beyond me. Um, I'll be updating everyone if I get any further information um, in in days and weeks to come. Thanks for listening to my channel and uh, stay tuned.